Hi, my name is Sebastian Littin and I'm happy to welcome you to this online special on our recent MRM paper entitled Development and Implementation of an 84-channel Matrix Gradient Coil. I would like to start off with a motivation why we wanted to build such a system. Nonlinear encoding fields allow for novel imaging techniques. Up to now, quite a few different methods have been presented. This includes parallel imaging, the image acquisition of curved slices, a nonlinear phase preparation can be used for localization or for shimming, and the image resolution can be locally adapted to the human anatomy. So our goal was to design a system which allows us to basically generate any type of encoding field. We set ourselves the following design goals. To be flexible regarding the realizable field shapes, a high number of individual elements is required. The feasibility for fast imaging requires a shielded coil design to suppress secondary effects and water cooling to transfer out the resistive heat. If we have only few different types of coil elements without any intersecting loops, each individual coil element may be manufactured individually and then combined in the end, which allows for an easy manufacturing process. Because the whole project is a feasibility study, we chose dimensions of a whole body gradient system and scaled it down to the size of a head insert. The first step to find a coil layout is the definition of current carrying surfaces. Our design consists of two different element types. The different element types have different heights and are arranged in rings, which are rotated by half an element. The resulting overlap of the main current carrying surfaces is one quarter of its area, which intrinsically gives low mutual coupling. We chose the main surfaces flat for easier winding and the combination of all shielding surfaces forms the outer cylinder. To match the size of a whole body gradient, we get seven rings, which gives us a total of 84 individual elements. An optimization was performed for each of the two different element types. In this optimization, the local gradient strength was maximized while taking the conductive layer into account to minimize the secondary effect from a superconductive layer in the cryostat. Additionally, the wire thickness was taken into account. You can find more on this optimization in a paper by my colleague Fang Zha. In the resulting design, there are no intersecting loops, which means that each element can be wound individually. In this design, the same wire to wind the coil and for connecting it can be used, which means there's no need for soldered interconnections inside the coil. In the mechanical design, additional space for connecting wires and for cooling tubes was included. Additionally, there are alignment pins and the cooling tubes give some additional alignment. Here you see a rendering to demonstrate how the final coil is going to look like. Each coil element was 3D printed using a powder bed and inkjet head printer, which is based on a plaster material. We decided to use this technology because the resulting structure is porous and can be infused with epoxy. Additionally, it withstands higher temperature than most plastic materials. Litz wire was used for winding, water cooling was realized with copper tubes, and different plastic materials were used for the outer shell, a start and end ring, rails, and rail sliders. The whole assembly was cast with epoxy under vacuum. In this image, you see everything which is needed to get started. A start ring, all elements for the first two rings, and the copper tubes for water cooling. During the assembly, all elements were slid down the cooling tubes ring by ring. Here you can see the inside of the coil 
which shows the stacked layers. All connecting cables had to be fed through the upper elements. An enclosing ring was added, rails were added, in the whole assembly temperature sensors are embedded, and the rails in combination with sheets of glass fiber reinforced plastic are the outer shell. The whole assembly was infused with epoxy under vacuum in-house. In this image you see the finalized coil on a handling unit where all elements can be electrically connected on the side panels of the card. The coil was integrated into our 3T scanner environment. We use 12 additional gradient channels to control our coil. The gradient amplifiers are controlled by in-house built electronics, which consists of a digital to analog converter, a driver board and a clock distribution board. Within this project, the open source framework Pulsec was developed, which allows for a really simple pulse sequence programming. You can find more information in this MRM paper or download the source code on GitHub. Within this framework, we can control the scanner and the additional components in a really simple way. To the results. First of all, we did a characterization of the coil we built. We tested the water cooling with duty cycles and amplitudes similar to ones used for imaging. It proved to be effective and sufficient for our imaging applications. Due to the relatively low inductance of each element, much faster ramp times can be achieved. However, we are limited by the pulse width modulation frequency of the amplifiers. We could still validate rise times of approximately 40 microseconds. For the serial connection of multiple elements, a theoretical rise time below 25 microseconds is still possible. The maximum gradient strength cannot be defined in a straightforward manner because it depends on the position inside the field of view. A minimum gradient strength of 24.3 millitesla per meter can be generated even in the center. A minimum gradient strength of 78 millitesla per meter can be generated at a radius of 0.11 meters. However, the maximum gradient strength doesn't tell very much about the imaging capabilities. The imaging capabilities are defined by the effective gradient strength, which is spanned by three orthogonal gradients. This is still larger than 21 millitesla per meter throughout the imaging volume. Effects from eddy currents were measured and are below 1%. The localized nature of the generated encoding fields can be seen in these images. Depicted are measured triaxial views for the two different element types. Individual elements can be combined to synthesize spatial encoding fields. Depicted here are, for example, linear and quadratic encoding fields. The synthesized spatial encoding magnetic fields have been used for initial imaging experiments. The first image was encoded with synthesized linear encoding fields generated by the matrix coil. Expected distortions from field nonlinearities occur in this image. This can be corrected for by using a conjugate gradient reconstruction. For reference, images acquired with a built-in gradient system are depicted. Shown is a straightforward Fourier transform and for comparison a conjugate gradient reconstruction. To demonstrate the flexibility of the matrix coil, padlock imaging with quadratic fields and nonlinear phase preparation are shown. With this, I would like to thank my co-authors, the people mentioned here who helped building the coil and our funding agency. Thank you.